Welcome back to JSA TV, where we are coming to you live from the Expo Hall of Yada 2024 here in Las Vegas. We're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from leaders across the digital infrastructure industry. And joining me right now on JSA TV, we've got Sean Novak from Tech Fusions. Thanks so much for stopping by. Thanks for having me. So before we, we've got a, you guys have had a little bit going on and a, a lot we want to talk about here, but before we can really get into it, just for people who aren't familiar with Tech Fusions, can you just let us know what you do and how you help your customer base? Yeah, sure. So Tech Fusions, uh, we, we focus on technology, environment, and community, the tech of Tech Fusions. Um, unlike other operators in the industry, um, we, we are focusing more on time to market. So as an owner operator, there's a lot of capacity demand that's out there today. Um, growth has been higher than ever. Um, demand's absolutely out of this world, but there's no supply. Uh, so we, we do a lot of our uh, uh, buildings are adaptive reuse. Uh, so there are already existing structures that are in place. So we are able to convert those buildings into data centers in a very fast time frame, uh, delivering capacity to our clients on or off grid utility. Uh, so if utility is available at the sites, we'll take advantage of that. And if it's not, then we use net gas turbines and go completely off grid powering data centers with a renewable energy source. Yeah, what well, renewable energy, obviously we're here at a conference where that's one of the big things that, that um, everybody is talking about. So that's definitely a really unique and innovative approach to, to bringing things to market faster. Uh, I mean, we, we, we Obviously, sustainability is the utmost importance for a lot of the companies that we're doing business with. Mm -hmm. And so um, we, having the capabilities with the adaptive reuse, we also are lowering the embodied emissions in our sites. So everyone's scope three emissions. We're able to show um, a reduced savings on the ESG reports on that, that front as well. Absolutely. So you talked about growth is just at an all time high at this point. And there are there are options out there. There are lots of co-location providers out there. How can co-location providers really stand out and, and what can operators be doing differently to bring a better service? Yeah, um, so going back to the utility, um, the, the demand is strong, the supply is weak. Uh, and so having the capabilities to be off-grid and, and create our own energy source um, is allowing us to deliver capacity to clients. Whereas right now they're waiting three years until the utility can actually deliver more capacity in those certain markets. Um, and quite honestly, uh, the utility providers are having a tough time, you know, turning up coal power plants to go energize some of the, the, um, the utility there. Uh, it's not, we, we don't have to deal with that, right? So we're, we're not going to wait three years and have all the delays that they're having. And they're going to come back and say, well, it's another two years. Sorry. Um, we're able to take advantage of all of the net gas that we have on our campuses and create our own energy source. So when the utility does deliver the capacity, all right, that's great. That will be our backup. But for now, we can go 100% off grid and deliver capacity much faster than waiting for someone else to deliver it to us. It's so great, absolutely. And, and you're talking about also, you, you're, you're working on a, a structure that's already there. It's already most of the time connected to the grid. You're not having to do permits to do new builds. Is that the secret sauce? Is it's, that how you guys have been able to be. have the growth that you've <laughs> had so be. quickly? Yeah, I mean, all, all these sites are uh, permitted for heavy use industrial, um, which data center classify, uh, classifies as. Uh, so yeah, like uh, you go in there, you take this monster shell and you're able to fit out a, a data center. And with the densities that we're talking about inside these data centers, um, there's, there's so much good technology that's available to us today. Uh, so we can hit higher densities using the technology that's available to us. We don't have to build a traditional data center that takes you know six months to do all of your site mitigation. Then you have to do all of your permitting, your base of the design, and then three years later, I have a data center. Um, I can put these up in six months, and then we can go live, which yeah. is incredible for the clients that uh, I think everyone that we're talking to, they're waiting and waiting. They're waiting for their customers to sign with them. And then they come to us like, we need this capacity, but we need it. We need it yesterday. How fast can you deliver it? Uh, so time to market is the most critical path and we have a solution for them. That's amazing. Is it taking hold across the industry? I feel like the people are raising <laughs> yeah. their eyebrows a little bit and saying, what's going yeah, on over like, there? What are they doing? Uh, how are they doing that? Uh, it's, it's interesting. I mean, we're, we're all friends, right? Like we're, there's enough business to be had amongst every operator that's out there. Um, so we can share stories and uh, the horror stories and, and the goods, the bads, the uglies. Uh, so uh, I don't I don't see this as uh, competitive. It's more of like a 
a co-opetition. Um, we, we all are in it together and we're, we're all out there to deliver the capacity for all the clients that we all are talking to. We're all talking to the same people. You're absolutely right. And with, you know, one of the other big theme here at the conference is AI, artificial intelligence. It's definitely driving the need for the services that you're delivering as well as many others that, uh, that are here. I'd just like to ask you kind of very broadly across our industry, how do you see AI having an impact both now and 10, 20 years from now? All right, well, 10, 20 years from now is uh, quite a long time. Um, let, let's, One year, we could go with that. <laughs> let's focus on now. Um, so we have, uh, I, I'd like to consider this, uh, Hyperscale came out and was growing like crazy, right? They're absorbing all the capacity in the industry. Um, I, this, this trend that we're seeing today is larger than what we saw three, four or five years ago. Uh, it's an incredibly exciting time to be part of this. Um, I do not see this slowing down for the next five years. Um, there's an, an incumbent of uh, AI companies that are you know, startups, more established companies. Um, I think crypto kind of converted from what they were doing, teaching us, uh, quite honestly, a lot of things about what data centers are capable of, even at a tier one or a just an end solution of design and how they were able to operate those things um, without ever having outages, right? So a lot of the, the AI companies now came from that world and taught us a lot of things that they were able to do and bring it back into the data center design today. Uh, so having a different, unique approach, utilizing the innovation that's available to all of us today, um, we're, we're able to satisfy the needs uh, with the growth of AI. I don't see it slowing down. I think that you know, we're gonna see uh, probably higher growth in AI over the next three to five years than where the hyperscalers were um, five years ago. Um, it's going to be a race for the capacity. Uh, the, the contracts are getting longer. The rates are continue to increase, um, which is great for the operators that they don't have to give away space anymore. It's, it's now you know, more competitive, so their margins are going to be better. They can start building data centers you know, they're, they're much better for their clients. Yeah. And it's like you mentioned that uh, sharing of ideas from, you know, the AI industry into what we're doing and then here amongst peers, it, it's just going to be so critical. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Um, it's, I'm happy to be part of it. Um, love, love what we do. Um, love that you guys are doing this and showing the, the industry, you know, all, all the different technologies are out there. So thank you for having me on here. You're welcome. Where can people go to keep up with what you guys have got going on? Um, I mean, visit our website, uh, techfusions.com. Um, we also have our LinkedIn page so you can see all the updates. We're constantly out there acquiring more sites uh, to, to meet the demands of our customers. Um, we have really big announcements coming soon, so stay tuned. Okay. All right. Well, we'll leave that there, but look forward to hopefully having you back soon on JSA TV so we can hear more. Awesome. Thank thanks, you. Thanks so much for stopping by, Sean, and thanks to our viewers for tuning in. Lots more to come here from Yada 2024, so stick around. But in the meantime, stay curious and stay connected.